Today we're going to recap all the games I completed last month, so let's get started. Starting at number one is Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. You are in the 1980s and your code name is Bell and you're working for the CIA and you're having the opportunity to find out what's going on and you have to go to places like Russia and you have to solve as to what's going on with a group of men that are terrorizing multiple countries and so the object is to get Ronald Reagan to approve everything and so you go through, you get debriefed by a bunch of higher ups and you're told to go to places like the Philippines so you get all the way around the, all the missions and slowly but surely goes from a regular campaign to you start tripping. You start seeing things that you can tell is not real. You keep going through the same scenario over and over and over again. I really like this campaign. I enjoyed it because it's a change of pace. Normally you go through, you're doing missions, you do your normal thing. But I like that it made you have to think of like, how did I get out of this puzzle? How do I get out of this area? And I liked the group of people that I worked with. It was a nice balance of realistic versus like what's really happening. And I won't spoil the story, but definitely try this out. The second game that I completed for the month was Biohazard Battle. This is a shoot 'em up, and basically, you're a group of survivors who have to take on the creatures. And it's a fun Genesis game. Uh, I know it was in the arcade, but I don't remember if it was in all of the states or if it was just in certain countries. You are, like a like any ship shoot 'em up game, you are in a regular ship that's like an alien ship and you battle and you take out all the creatures. Uh, I like the creatures, the bosses were fun. It did warn you when you're about to battle somebody and so I always like that when you get like a warning, like in Hander. And I had a fun time with this. I did rage a little bit <laughs> at the very end. So yeah, this one made me take a little bit of a break between doing another shoot 'em up for sure. So the next game, I'm not going to even try to say it. If you know how to say it, say it in your head right now because it's a fighter. Um, it's based off the manga anime show. It's from the 90s, late 80s, early 90s. Basically, it's a fighter, 2D fighter from all the main characters. I think there's like 10 plus characters you could choose from. The one difference from like Street Fighter to this game is the story mode has you battle one round. If you don't finish them off in one round, you have to go again. Uh, most of the characters are balanced. There's a few characters that are about speed and a few characters that are about power. But for the most part, you have your ranged character, you have your character that is just like a well-rounded character, the main one. And then you are battling all the characters. That's another thing I like about fighters that do that, where not just you battle a couple of them that the character knows, you battle all of them. And then you get the final guy at the very end. I love the mirror image fight. It was fun. So definitely check it out for sure. Next, I played a game that's on the Game Boy Advance and that is Rampage Puzzle Attack. You are George, Lizzie, and Rolf again. But this time, it's kind of like Puyo, Puyo Tetris kind of style game where you have to match colors and it's not like your normal typical just get lines and you get points and stuff like that. You have to clear each board. So you'll have like a set of different puzzle pieces in the area and then you have to figure out okay there's so many moves I have that I can do and I have to get them all cleared so you have to figure out what's the best option this is a little bit longer on the puzzle game side it does have more than like 50 levels if you're not wanting to play that you can you know get an emulator to save it and then come back and play it later but it was fun I did enjoy that the character was on the side you watch the character like punch the screen and different things like that to keep it going but had a fun time with this puzzle game. Definitely worth it. I won't pay full price for it if they are ever going to go up again. Don't buy this GBA for, for like 50 bucks. It's not worth it. Next, I played a game on stream and finished the story mode and it's River City Melee Mac. This is kind of like Smash Brothers. It's a battle royale brawler game where you have four characters and you have four teams and you get to pick from your teams. Some of them have like five characters, some of them have four. The ones that have four, they're all tanky, beefy, like really super strong. And so the object of the game is to get the most points, not to knock and take the person out, but have the most points at the end. That's the only difference between a lot of the other fighter brawler games. The story was hilarious. I had a good time with it because um, there was like a twist at the end and it made me laugh. The game is glitchy though, just FYI. 
Um, and there's weapons that are overpowered. There was like a taser that I used and literally once I got that, all the AI characters were finito. But friendly fire is in this game, so just watch out for your second character. Because if you have your second character there and they get tased and they knock over your character, your character's gonna take damage, so just a friendly warning on that one. The next game I finished was a beat-em-up that I kind of felt like I played before, but it was a different style of game. And that is something that I was surprised by. So this is a Dreamcast game, it's a beat-em-up, and it's basically Die Hard Arcade, but they changed the characters for the people that lived in Japan. And pretty much you have three characters. I played as Bruno. And pretty much what you are doing is you are trying to stop an evil group that is on a ship and get back a daughter from, like, somebody kidnapped a daughter. And so you have to take your chances and do three different style missions. You can either parachute down, um, you can ride by boat, or you can go under the water and go through the down the ship areas and figure out how you're going to get where you need to go. So... It's a fun beat em up. Um, it, it's just exactly like Die Hard Arcade. You have certain points where you have to do quick time events where you have to like go say like hit the kick button, get down, different things like that. And if you fail, you have to battle more than you would normally do if you succeed the whole time. So I had a fun time with this. This is hilarious. It's on the Dreamcast. Um, if you do find it, it's pretty pricey. I looked it up. So I recommend emulating it, finding it on the emulator. Uh, that's what I did, I how I played it. And it's definitely worth your time. Next is a hack game. It's Street Fighter of Rage 2. I have beat Streets of Rage 2 with Chris James. But I found this on my RetroPie and I had to play it. Basically, they take the characters from Street Fighter. It's like Ryu, Ken. And they basically let you play Streets of Rage all the way through. I will say this is a little bit easier than the other one. Uh, the original Streets of Rage didn't drop as much health. This drops a little bit more health, so it helps you out along the way. You have a better chance of getting through it. The only thing that I found weird at first was the characters move faster than Streets of Rage 2. So everybody's in hyper mode because Streets of Rage is not in hyper mode, but Street Fighter is. So all the characters move faster. I thought I had a glitched version, but then I realized it dawned on me. I was like, oh yeah, Turbo because Street Fighter. So just a warning if you ever play this hack version. Everybody moves faster, so just get faster at it. And he does do Hadoukens and all this other stuff, so you can still use your range to get everybody to like stay away from you. Because there's some characters in about like stage 6 that are just brutal, so definitely use that. Make sure you get all the way through, and you'll have a fun time with this. I played as Ryu, and I had a blast. The next game is a weird game. It's Dot Detuned. It's a PlayStation 3 game that I've never seen before, but it was on PlayStation Plus and I decided to try it out. You're basically dropped in the middle of a scenario and you have no rhyme or reason as to what's going on, how to do anything, and you just see a guy sitting in a chair and you hear music playing. And you basically have to go through and figure out button combinations, how to get different things happening. To get the trophies to pop up because there's really no end to this game it's literally like you could just play for hours if you want to you can download music unfortunately the playstation 4 version is broken for the trophies because it won't let you download music onto it because it's streaming off of a server you can't download it because you have to have it on your hard drive in your playstation either playstation 3 or 4 and because you're streaming you can't do that so just forewarning, um, I did get all the other trophies besides that because I just kept trying different button combinations. And it's basically, you transform the guy's head into an elephant, a balloon, a clown. You're looking around the area, you're just, you're seeing a bunch of chaos happening behind him. It's a weird game. I would never pay for this, just FYI. It was free and that's the only reason I put this game on to play. Otherwise, I would never, not, I wouldn't even pay a dollar for this game. Not worth it. After that, I played a fighter again, which is Power Rangers Battle for the Grid. This is a game that I've been playing off and on for like several months, almost I think a year now. Um, I played it on the Xbox and then I finished it on the PlayStation 4. And then I was like, okay, let me try it this way, this way, this way. Basically, it is 
the comics from Power Ranger Comics Universe where uh, Tommy is evil and he's combined white and green powers and so he's trying to defeat all the good Power Rangers which are the Power Rangers that are with Zordon still. Everybody else has gone to Rita because she's convinced them that it's the best option to do. And so you have to battle. The only thing that is annoying is a lot of the ranged characters, they just juggle you. They'll throw bombs constantly. So you have to get used to, like, if you know the character's ranged and has either, like, a like a bomb or, like, something like that, you have to, like, make sure that you stay close to that character. And it's basically kind of like a button mashing, like, scenario sometimes. Like, if you just win the battle and you get them, you start juggling them. You can juggle them for like 30 plus combo and once that happens you're you're screwed you basically all your your health is gone so i have raged at this fighter for so long that's why it took me so many times to finally get through this game i just i don't know like i i like the fighter i like power rangers but just in general it's frustrating a lot of the times i have seen so many times where i'm like i'm gonna just knock this guy out no he pulls off a super move, one of the moves that's allowed, and then just does a juggle. And it's like, come on. Oh my gosh. Like, it, I've tried so many different ways to get out of those juggles, and I can't. So, forewarning, you'll be raging. But all in all, it's, it's a fun story. I do enjoy it, and definitely play it. It's free on PlayStation Plus, and I think it was on Xbox Game Pass. So, for sure, try it out if you're a Power Ranger fan. The last game that I finished was another shoot 'em up and that is R-Type Dimensions. It's a PlayStation 3 game. It's another R-Type game. Uh, basically the same thing, same premise. You are in a ship, you're shooting through all the creatures. Really does feel like the NES game. Literally, like when I started the first round, I was like, wow, this feels like the NES game or the Super Nintendo game. Like every game seems like it's just they keep the same formula, the same patterns for all the creatures. And this one is easier. I will say I can't beat the NES slash Super Nintendo game at all, but I can finish this one. So that tells you right there. This one's way, way easier. So I finished another 10 games for September. My total now is 90 games for the year so far. Let me know. How are you doing with your games? Are you keeping track? Let me know the highlights for September if you did not finish a game. And thank you for watching. If you are rolling out, give it a like. And if you're new, please consider subscribing. It does help out the channel. And I'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody.